Okay, so just thinking about the purported significance of numbers, right? Our um, mind, our language, our arithmetic is in base 10. We have these 10 basic numbers, right? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, and maybe 0. Maybe we say there's 11. Or something. There's just a few. There's literally a handful. <laughs> Both hands equals my counting system, which itself is probably not a mistake. Now, what happens in the study of human tradition is that we very frequently come up with <clears throat> the seven that's referenced in this, let's say, movement or document or tradition uh, must relate to something. Well, the seven, there's seven C's. Oh, yeah, and they were seafarers, the people that came and uh, cut to 200 years later. Definitely because they were seafarers. They loved the seven seas. Therefore, this document that mentions the seven types of viewing, whatever, is based on that. Even though the historical evidence is that they traveled across two seas, and that's all they knew in the world. And if we look at the number eight, if we look at the number nine or five or four, you can immediately think of a whole bunch of things that four would apply to. Like, oh, there's four basic four-leggedness, right? Like, there's four basic, you know, shapes. There's four, four big, whatever, four, you know. Um, uh, and so when we look at all of these numbers, and there's not a lot of the numbers, right? So 10 or 11 or something like that. It's very easy to see that somebody's argument, whether purposeful or not, will be arguing that the meaning of something is actually was present at the birth of the something. In other words, the meaning, I believe, is often added afterwards. So we ended up with six methods of cooking rice or something. Okay, fine. Eventually, somebody's going to say, well, you know, six is... The, the number of directions, left, right, forward, back, up, down, and therefore it's about all the directions that you can take rice. And that is why our forefathers gave us the six, right? As opposed to saying, actually, they can only think of six. There was just, they, they steamed it, they fried it, they boiled it, they like were kind of out of other, you know. <clears throat> and so I think it's really important for us to remember that when we look for meaning, there will be people selling us the meaning, not even necessarily nefariously, because the story is so juicy, right? There's seven types of boat because there's seven seas. Oh my God, that's so perfect. Why would I argue with that or look into it? Now, there will also be people selling it to you because they want you to believe. And that <clears throat> meaning will uh, deliver the story to you more readily, more happily, more securely if it comes that way. And there are probably really almost no examples in which we can't say this thing that is numbered, this set of things, I can't find a, a meaning for. <clears throat> and even if I'm not inventive enough to come up with a meaning, there's billions of people. Somebody's coming up with a meaning. <clears throat> and some people just assume it is that because that number of things happens in their society, and then this same number happened over here with this, so they presume it. Other people, it's more nefarious. Other people, it just kind of happens that way over time, like almost like osmosis. Like it's in their culture, the two things for, I don't know, hundreds or thousands of years, and it becomes just how it's understood. That doesn't mean that that meaning was there at the birth. The number 117 and two fifths which doesn't come up very often. <laughs> You're not going to say, well, you know, at any given time you can hey, see 117 and two-fifths, uh, you know, types of clouds. That's not, that's an unmanageable number. So people don't have meaning for 257 over 3 root 4. 
they don't have a meaning for that. But it's not too hard to come up with a meaning for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 0. Like, that's not a lot of things. And so we often kind of talk ourselves into supporting an idea because it fits so nicely. Oh, you know, there, there's, there's three types of fists in the martial art. And there was, there was only three provinces in China. When, and of course, one represented, probably not. Now, could one represent? Could it come to represent? Could I have a mnemonic? that serves me, and my, that's great, and maybe that's even how some of it comes to be. A mnemonic is established, cut to 300 years later of playing telephone, and it becomes the meaning that was born into it, right? There at the birth of it. Um, and <clears throat> so I can, I can deliver meaning to it um, without consciously meaning to, and I can consciously intend to do something It's not quite deliver meaning to it, but it becomes the meaning of it for others, like when I establish a mnemonic. So I would say it's really, really important for us to say, you know, why is it four? Why is it three? Why is it six? Whenever you have this small number, you're likely to get a reason or figure one out, which is fine, but it may very well not have been the reason. It might very well not have been the reason. It's just that there is very few things in our basic number set. And so many of the things that we're able to sort of juggle in our minds are small numbers. We don't say 117 and two-fifths very often, right? And I don't know how to remember that compared to the 116 and three-fifths, you know. Uh, you know. So I think it's important to understand that where knowledge is passed on around numbers and their meaning, I think quite often that meaning is something that's applied to the knowledge or adjacent to the knowledge or similar to the knowledge set, but it wasn't born there. So it doesn't have to do with the why of the knowledge set, right? And we can't go back in time and probably prove some of these things. So I'm certainly somebody did sit around and say, there are four directions, so I'm going to develop four prayers so that I have, you know, that probably happened too. And there is somebody that teaches the four prayers that reflect upon us the four directions of the world. And that's fine. But if I gave you another set of four, eventually you're going to think north, south, east, and west. Right? And if I give you a set of three, you're going to think something else. Right? So um, just a bit of caution about the archaeology, if you will, or paleoanthropology of, you know, human knowledge and understanding, whether purposeful or purported or perhaps just mistaken. Okay.